Hello and welcome to Examine Budweiser branded products. Budweiser, Bud, Bud branded. Some people will use the term Bud. So they're both copyrighted, trademarked by Anheuser Busch and Bud. But Budweiser, Bud, Bud Light, Bud Ice, Bud Light, Clamato, Chilada, Bud, Budweiser, Clamato, Chilada, Picante, Bud Light, Clamato, Fuego and so on, Bud Light itself. Budweiser Nitro Reserve, this is the famous Budweiser beer. We know of no brand produced by any other brewer which costs so much to brew and age. They may not know of too many other brands. Our exclusive Beechwood Aging produces a taste, a smoothness, and a drinkability you will find in no other beer at any price. That's a bold claim, that's a bold label. It's a beautiful label too, by the way. So we're examining it. They have a great label. Now we have to say that. Oh yeah, I mean, I guess you could disagree, but in my opinion, they always did have one of the greatest labels, which they've changed over the years, off and on. They're going back to kind of the old, older label, but wise, er. Hey, I'm doing an examination. Hello, thanks for watching. Uh, B Aviation. Uh, let's see, five percent alcohol. Um, electricity is one type of energy we use to brew. So some virtue signaling there. Show you how awesome they are. Brewed with 100% renewable energy, electricity from wind power. Another virtue signal. That's what we need, you know, more politics and beer and sports. Best by 19th of July, 2021. United States, uh, the United States of America, A, B, and B. Okay, so enough of that. Okay. Hello, guests. We have Ronald Sutton and we have Jesse. Well, there goes Ronald. <laughs> he has really <laughs> top notch technology. All right. He's using wind power. So, it's, but there's Jesse at uh, Bumpy Bro Brewing. And so, okay, I'm going to pour mine and then I'm going to show yours. So, I'm just going to get mine out the way. So, there we go with that very pale. Rice adjunct lager. It's pale like the uh, Rolling Rock. Probably equally as pale and uh, maybe a slight bit darker. And it's got that, I always say Budweiser has that greenish hint, tint to it. We'll try Ronald again. We, we like baseball. We'll give three strikes for you. All right. Here we go. I'm good, aren't All I? Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. let me now adjust this a little bit. Now we're going to let Jesse showcase his, and we'll get to Ronald. So I'm in Louisiana. Jesse's in New Hampshire, and Ronald is in Ohio. Right. Well, I'm actually bringing a product from Budweiser that I've never, ever had before, so I figured this would be a great opportunity to give it a, a go. So it's not my typical type of, uh, of a drink. Got the Lima Rita. Sparkling margarita comes in at eight percent ABV. This is a twenty-five fluid ounce can. Um, I don't know if I'm supposed to rotate these or whatever. I'm not sure how these things work. No, that's not necessary. Here I okay. got a Budweiser glass too, y'all. Look, malt beverage with natural flavors and caramel color added. Mm. Gotta Sounds love delish. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, they're, they're similar, Daniel. Yes. All right. Oh, yes. God darn. It kind of looks like a margarita, I guess, like a lime margarita. Yeah. It's got that kind of coloration to it. Mimic. Yeah. The, oh, the head definitely did not last. That's gone. But I'm getting a ton of lime notes just 
from opening the can and pouring it. Lots of lime around here now. Cheers. Cheers. Now, Ronald is going to tell us, show us what he's got, and we'll go back around to everybody. Of course, we got Beverage Ramble from Mobile, Alabama. Yes, Budweiser. This, this is one of the best vessels to deliver a, a beverage in. 16 ounce aluminum bottle. You know, heavy one. And once in a while, it gets a little tough to open them. But. Ugh, yeah, see what I mean? It gets a little tough to open them. I, I, I just got this one out, but I still have some in this glass. But Budweiser, it's it's a awesome product, in my opinion. You know, I drink it. I'm a lit. I got a Budweiser hat on. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's just a. It's hard to compete with the quality product that they produce. Yeah, you know, it's, it's 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 there is no higher quality, in my opinion, on earth than a Budweiser beer. I've been a lot of places on this planet. And that's it's the it's the same product no matter where you go. I'll give I'll give no. a, a cheers to that, okay. huh? All right, I'm going to talk more about that in a little bit. Um, now we're going to go to on the, on the on the taste notes. Have you guys ever picked up? I, I pick up some lemon, you know, like lemon 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 something on the back end of the beer. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk about that now. Um, beverage ramble, oh beverage ramble, you better hurry back before you get passed over, like uh, Fredo uh -oh. got passed over. You're about to get passed over, like Fredo. Fredo. Isn't that the guy in that in that in that uh, that mystical show that was filmed in Scotland? Fredo, what was uh, what yeah. they call him, people? Yeah, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about Fredo Corleone. All right, Corleone, anyway. you're talking about Corleone. Okay, well, we'll get back to Jean. Hey, my, you, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a grandfather. My, my son pitched a hell of a game the other night. It was a two-one win. Both pitchers pitched complete games. He had six strikeouts. I think they had three hits off of it. Yeah, my grandson. Here's to him, man. I, I was real proud. And it happened on my 92-year-old, his 92-year-old great grandmother's birthday. Yeah, it was a hell of a game. Cheers to yeah. your uh, grandson. Now, Jean and his success. Now, Jean-Pierre is eating, and let's get it together, Jean. Let's get it together. What you chewing on, man? Um, hey, good evening, gentlemen. How are y'all doing? Hope you had a great Wednesday. Hope you're having a great week. I'm eating, living on some uh, seafood salad mixed in with some chicken salad. So, and uh, so tonight, a little something healthy. Uh, but tonight, I wasn't so sure. I brought this because I'm not a fan of it, uh, but I decided to bring it anyway, and I gave it kind of a social review the first time I uh, reviewed it, and that is Bud Light Platinum. Yeah. I like it, but that's me. We're not the same person. Some say it, it came out. Is that a bluish bottle? Because originally it came out in a bluish bottle. Yeah. It's a bluish bottle, yep. Uh, this came out, I would say, Jay, what, 2014, 15, about that time? You're close. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, you're close. Yeah, so of course, remember a lot of... Say it again, Jay? You asked me a question. 2012. Okay, yeah. I remember there was a lot of big promotion for this. I know Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, did a commercial where he was a tennis player dressed as a woman with long hair. I think that's the only commercial I remember. It's so, a higher ABV, isn't it? What's what's the ABV there? Clyde? It's six percent. Six percent. So, some say it may be King Cobra in disguise. That's no, just the no, rumor. No, but. <laughs> no, it's a bad rumor. It's not backed up by facts because if you look at the recipe and the ingredients list on on tap into your beer, it's a totally different lineup. You can look if if you want to find out the ingredients to your beer, look on tap into your beer. Like Jesse could do that, or Ronald, it'll give you the the, the ingredients list. And so, I know that Bud Bud Light Platinum uses cane sugar in it from sugar cane, uh, actually. Okay, okay we're gonna get back to you. We're gonna get back to you. That's good seafood salad. Okay, now uh, we probably have some other people joining us. You know, now. 
I got my Budweiser cap. I got my Budweiser I got, cap. I got mine on, too. Uh, do you want me I to break out that. a couple of them to show you? I got I seven. That. Don't. I got my Budweiser t-shirt. And I got my Budweiser glass. Okay. Let's get serious now. Some people, this is 5% alcohol, 145 calories, been on the market since 1876. Now, some people say, um, and maybe they're right. I don't know. They just never provide any documentation. They'll say, oh, it changed over the years. I'll say, well, okay, I started drinking it in February 1996, and I honestly have not noticed a difference. Now, if I had noticed a difference in the flavor, body, mouthfeel, finish, and everything, I would say it. You know, I don't hesitate to, to uh, point those things out. And I'm going to update the comments, y'all, so don't think I'm ignoring your comments. All right. But honestly, I have not noticed a change in what I – drank first in 1996. I never drank Budweiser as a child because as a child, I did not drink beer. Although I did sip it from my parents' bottles as a toddler, but that was Miller High Life, Schlitz, and Dixie. Okay, but I thought those were very nice. Now, in you know 1970 or 71. Now, so we get a golden appearance. Sometimes it'll have a little green look to it, but uh, depends how the light's hitting it. And it's very bubbly. You could probably see the bubbles. Yeah, you can see those bubbles race into the top. The aroma. And I got so many Budweiser cans in my collection, it's ridiculous. Here's one of the older ones from a couple of years ago. They're always forever changing the label to keep up with the times. And the new cans got all the virtue signaling on it to tell you how awesome they are and how much better they are than you. Okay. <laughs> when you say Budweiser, you said it all. Here comes the king. Here comes the king. Here comes the big number one. All right. Cool it. Oh, wait, I hear sirens. <laughs> hope it's not an emergency. I hope they're escorting the Budweiser Clodsdales to an event. Okay. Cheers. Now, the aroma is clean. You get like clean cereal grain, rice and barley. That's the two cereals, rice and barley. Hops, I think they said they use oh, oh, some kind of noble hops like Styrian or Sass, something like that. Uh, combination, really. They have their they own use hop. A proprietary yeast. Their right. yeast is they proprietary. Yeah, their yeast is special. It's secret, and of course, like many companies, and they uh, they have their own barley farms, special contract barley farms in uh, the Northwest that only deal with Anheuser Busch. They have their and own rice and rice in Louisiana, and they're the, rice. Biggest, they're the biggest purchaser of rice in Louisiana. They buy more rice in Louisiana than any other company. All right. Um, And they have their own kiln houses. They have their own houses where they uh, malt the barley. And uh, they have their own glass company in Houston, Texas called Longhorn Glass, where they make their own bottles. A lot of people don't know that. They have their own glass company, Longhorn Glass. Anyway. I have a story about glass bottles from Budweiser. I'll get into it when it's my turn. Okay. The taste. First thing we notice, it's extremely crisp. This beer is crisp dry. It has a snappy finish. Um, now, some people don't sit well with the yeast. So with some drinkers, the yeast strain gives them a tough hangover, a tough headache, gives them a bad headache, especially Budweiser on draft because it's not pasteurized. and You get that the bacteria. Um, I, it never bothered me. Sometimes it'll feel like an ice pick through the temple, but um, <laughs> but um, the after effects with drinking Budweiser, to, to my experience, are zero. I don't have any, you know, there's, there's no negative side effects. All right, I'm going to hurry up. So medium bodied, a little sweetness. Do you pick up the rice? Well, 
It's hard to say. It's hard to say. Um, I think you do like boiled rice, uh, which I enjoy bo boiled rice. Um, it's a simple thing. It's a simple product. But like Ronald was saying, the quality control is superb. And um, every time I drink it, it's always the same. And they're, they're fanatics about uh, dates. Like um, I had some problems with some Miller Coors products that were woefully out of date. I mean, bad. And I was talking to the Budweiser Anheuser-Busch salesman here. And I said, he, he used to be here. I said, what would happen to you? You're the salesman if the quality assurance team came in and found a Budweiser on the shelf a year out of date. He said, I'm gone. He said, I've been no, working. No here. questions asked. You're, you're eliminated. Yeah. No questions asked. You're done. Yeah, he, he said, they just tell me, get my stuff and you're out. There's no way that can happen. That's an impossibility. It cannot happen without a termination. So they're they're very uh like high pressure on their employees that stuff has to be fresh. All right, anyway. I'm enjoying it. Like somebody said, I wish it was cheap like hams and Miller High Life. It would be a better value. Yeah, I understand. You're paying for the name. I get that. It's like when you buy Crown Royal whiskey, whiskey, you're paying for the name, you know. So uh, but uh yeah, I, I got no problem with it. I'm enjoying it as always. So now Jesse's going to give his opinion about a rather unusual product that's been on the market since 2008. Yes. And I did go into that uh, tap into, so that's strictly like that's an AB an, uh, InBev site. Like, so don't be thinking you're going to find your founders beers. Within right. The it's site. only not, product. Right. right. Um, so I did find the Lima Rita which I think all the Rita's are probably the same, but the ingredients are water, corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup, barley malt, citric acid, sodium citrate, natural flavors, caramel color, hop extract. But it does have 330 energy, <laughs> which I'm thinking that's fat. Sugars. <laughs> yeah, calories. Yeah, I love how they say energy instead of what it really is. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, that's what it's looking like. It looks like it does look like a margarita. I mean, I could have salted or sugared the rim type deal. The aromas, like I said, there's a lot of lime, there's a ton of lime. It's, I don't want to use the cleaning agent thing, but it, it is a potent, a pretty potent smell, like you might find in some cleaning agents. Uh, pledge or something, but that's more lemon, I think, than lime. Uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty, it's very lime forward. It does kind of have that margarita aroma to it. It seems like there is like a salt to this, but they're really, I don't think they put salt in it. I don't think that was one of the ingredients, no. but it almost smells that way. Maybe I just associate salt with margaritas and lime. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Jesse, I'm going to ask you a question in a minute. Mm. This has a kind of thick, syrupy mouthfeel to it. It's it's a bit sticky. Um, very, very sweet. Uh, a lot like if you're drinking corn syrup, I guess. Very, very sweet. There is a lime um, component in there. It does kind of have some flavors that you would find in a margarita if you were to go to a Mexican restaurant or whatnot, or if you made your own margaritas, I guess. Um, it, it doesn't really go into the like the tequila. I think I think they use tequila and margaritas. No, not really a hard liquor drinker, but I think it's usually yeah, tequila and margarita. Right. You're right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you're it right. doesn't go like full on like tequila type notes, but it kind of you kind of get the the flavoring of the margarita <laughs> that would be then added to the tequila um kind of spritzy it's it's got it's got some carbonation to it but man it is so 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 sweet <laughs> super sweet can you imagine um, 8 abv the, the, the alcohol is not noticeable as can far you as imagine like flavor or anything like that? Can you imagine drinking too many of those? <laughs> oh man, 
I think my teeth would run out of them. It's just that's how sweet it is. It's like, like I'm getting phlegm built up in my throat from it. That's it's so syrupy. <laughs> The, the the thing to do because they do mention it, put it, drink it out of the can as is, or pour it over ice. I think if you pour it over ice, it's probably the smarter thing to do because it's going to start to dilute it a little bit. Water, you know what I mean. So it's not going to be so syrupy. It's it's pretty syrupy. This is like drinking like an extract of some sort that was supposed to be blended with something else. A lot of women drink these things and get totally smashed. Yeah, and they. They're at football games at the tailgate party and they're just down because it like you say, no alcohol presence. So they're downing them and just guzzle them and they just get I've seen them at Louisiana State University football games pregame. They're drinking the the Bud Light Lime Maritas, or it could be the Mango Rita, whatever. Yeah, woo, woo. About two hours later, you walk past where they were and they're face down in the grass. And you say, Oh boy. No, yeah. yeah. I mean, and this is like, yeah, 25 fluid. I mean, so I still have even though this one glass would do me perfectly fine because it's so, so it's cloying. It's like cloyingly sweet. And yeah. uh, I don't really want more, but I already have the can open. So I'm going to have to finish it. That's just the rules in my house. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, um, do you know what the sodium citrate is used for? Sodium citrate, it's probably something to do with keeping it fresh or something. No, I asked that as a, I did that as a plant. I already had researched it. I did that as a, like a provocateur. Sodium citrate is a chemical used in food to make food taste tart. Tart. And now sodium, okay. now let's think about it. Sodium, sodium. So you said it salt. tastes salt, salty. Yes. Citrate, citrate, citrus, citrate. So it's like a chemical agent that makes things taste tart. And you'll notice the tartness in that Rita, that lime burrito. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, because limes are kind of, they got a tartness to them already. So, but I don't think they, they never mentioned it using real lime juice in this. Yeah. It's all no, like it's lime flavor. It's probably some kind of like dehydrated yeah. lime. Who knows what? It is natural, though. It's not artificially flavored. artificially colored though <laughs> yeah, it's artificially colored though yeah all right well uh you have my sympathy i mean i meant to say enjoy it and um now mm. yeah Ronald i won't Button, be buying these again but i've hey jesse you know what you want to hear a, a sad story i've tried the whole lineup oh really but my favorite was the coconut now that was a Interesting product, the coconut. Now, mm. Ronald is going to present, and Jesse's going to deal with it. Deal with the Arita, I mean, the Rita, you know. Oh, I think you've been listening to Sutton. No, we all are going to deal with that. <laughs> We're all going to deal with Ronald. All right, I'm drinking the infamous Budweiser. Again, you know, they, they, the quality controls through the roof. Yeah, you know, it tastes the same no matter where you go. But anyway, I, 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 I always pick up a little bit of lemon on the back end of drinking no, a Budweiser. You said you I were going to expand on that. As yeah, far as that banana notes, a lot of people talk about banana notes. I, I've never got a banana note out of it. No. Never. Never. I, I, I can't. Maybe I can't pick it up. But I do pick up that, that little bit of lemon. But, you know, we used to go back in the early 80s. I'd go down to the Budweiser distributors and buy three cases, three cases a week. I'd, I'd have three cases. I'd put them down in my basement and bring them up and put them in the fridge. You know, returnable bottles, returnable bottles. It came out to like $11.60, I think, for a case. But anyhow, we'd stock up on it. It was a Saturday morning ritual, man. You'd see all kind of people down there, you know, hey, how you doing, blah, blah, blah. You enjoy the game last night? Yeah, you know, whatever. But uh, there was two different – there was a, a two different bottle uh, producers for Budweiser. It was Ball and Kerr. 
you know, just like you get ball jars or cur jars or mason jars. But one plant used ball and one plant used cur. You know, you couldn't decipher the code. But there was a difference in the taste between those two brewers. I think it had to do with freshness. You know, one one might have been closer, like the Columbus was closer to Steubenville and they used ball jars or something. But yeah, there was, you could tell, there was a distinct difference. It was just a little quirk that stuck in my mind from back in 82 or 80, yeah. I was probably 22 years old. Yeah, 82, 82, something like that. But no, I, I I always stick with Budweiser. I mean, I enjoy it. Uh, I'll never never turn one down. That's for sure. I don't care what time of day night it is. Somebody offers me a Budweiser, I'll suck it down. You know, I, I but, that story. I do believe that story. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm done. Okay. Right, you want I'm me gonna... to score? You know, I've always scored it the same. I've always scored it the same. Now we'll exactly. come back. I, I, stole, I stole my scoring off of uh, off of uh, oh shit, the girl up in Connecticut. Yeah, we'll we'll so, yeah, she, Alan, we'll we'll come back to Nina. Beverage, You're talking about Nina. Ramble. Yeah, Nina. Beverage, beverage ramble now. Beverage ramble with his seafood salad. Somehow, I'm not surprised that. This is happening. All right. Now, um, so you get passed over. Well, too bad. You mention her. Talking about Nina of Rhode Island. There's Nina of Rhode Island. She pop on? Nina, you eat. Well. I re I re I'll never right. forget her score on a Budweiser. There she is. That's why I scored score the same as, as, as she did. Okay. Well, wait. Well, well. well Stay calm, cool, and collected, and we'll get back to you. Oh, there she is. Welcome to the show, girl. What's up? Hey, you. You're the main topic. <laughs> we're, focused, we're focused on your body, dear. Woo. All right, all right. Cool it. We're focused, we're focused on your body, dear. <laughs> Full. Actually, I got light body tonight. You know, I'm not, you know, so so full figure this evening. I, I'm going for the, the, the light, the light material. Somebody's got an echo. <laughs> Is that me? It is. <laughs> yeah, because you were playing. You, you got the stream that. going. Oh, I got the, the stream going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. All right. So I got Bud Light, um, and this is experimental territory for me because I, I don't drink a lot of Bud Light, and I knew you guys were reviewing this stuff tonight, so I figured no greater time than the present to uh, see what this particular light beer is all about. So far, I've had most of this can, and I have no real, like, appreciative taste from this beer it's very neutral very neutral and i'm not even getting like a lemon kind of note from this that you guys were discussing and i'm not getting like a bush kind of a, a taste from it i'm just getting a really clean and uh like just whistle wetting beverage from this it's hardly even beer um I remember at a period in time back when they were all using those special liners in their cans, like that plastic, like I, I know Miller Light had one, and I'm pretty sure Bud Light had one. And all the light beers at that point in time were just impalatable. And I'm starting to think that maybe the cardboard taste that I used to associate with Bud Light was those strange liners and stuff from that time period. Uh, uh, you know, of these, of the cans, the, the fresh, whatever the industry standard was at the time. So I'm getting a real clean taste from this, yet I'm not getting a lot of flavor. Um, this wouldn't be bad. I wouldn't turn this down. Um, this would be like a, an all-day beer. But what is the ABV of one of these is the real question. Yeah, 4.2. 
4.2. So it's basically, it's pretty sessionable as it is. I'm not sure how refreshing it is in the long run, but right now, like if I wanted to have Chinese food or something, you know, real sodium based, something like I'm doing an Easter ham, something like that, this might be able to keep you hydrated um, through an entire day or, you know, like a hot outdoor event. Um, you know, uh, it's the staying power. Does it have the, the yeast that Budweiser has? What's the long-term effect of, of drinking this Bud Light? Do you get that kind of, you know, uh, as you described, ice pick to the forehead from Bud Light? I, I'm, I'm not getting that. Um, so maybe that's why it's so popular. Yeah, I mean, that beer you compare with anything, Nina. I mean, it's just, it's, I'm not a fan of it. I think their other light beers are a lot cheaper that I'd rather buy, but... As you said, it's one of those things that can mix pair with anything. Sodium, Chinese, pizza. Mm -hmm. I can see wow. why it's so popular, but why would you uh, – this isn't something I would want to put with good ethnic food. You know, like if I went out to eat Italian food, I would want an Italian beer. Um, pizza place, I don't know. Uh, what's, what's the pizza place have? Maybe something a little more hot would be nice with your pizza. Um, so I just don't see the, uh, the mass appeal, but – I do not see what the repellent would be. Um, if I was on a fishing boat or something and they were like, all right, all the Bud Light you can drink. Um, <laughs> this is something I wouldn't turn down. So but yeah, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't, But you wouldn't be looking for it, yeah. You know. I'm not turning a blind eye to it either. It's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a seal of a blue, it's a blue ribbon basically. <laughs> Well, I'm the same way. You offer me Bud Light, I'll take it. Am <laughs> I going to buy it? Hell no. So, Cheers, yeah. John. Yes. Yeah. Uh, good evening, Nina, again. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Sorry I had to run. I had to go. Something just came up uh, tonight as I'm drinking Bud Light Platinum, 6% ABV. Um, so this has been since I've only done their reviews. It's kind of warmed up a little bit. Again, looks very clear, like your Bud Light. And sipping on it so far, and I'm uh, and I said I was eating this uh, seafood salad mixed with the chicken salad together, and now I'm eating this brochette, this uh, small size pizza, whatever you call it. Um, it's it's holding its own, but again, I don't feel the fullness of it. Um, uh, I, it's just not there. I didn't. To me, it's it's only 137 calories. There's a little slight apple now that it's warmed up. Like I said, I, I poured it and it sat it on, on, the, on the, this counter here. Somewhat warm. It has a little apple taste to it. But right now, like I said, I've had this a few times. And at 6%, I don't feel nothing when I drink this. You know, I don't buy it a lot. But when I do get it, and, when you know, I'll say, I'm like, eh, this, this ain't all right. It's all right. But I don't feel that fullness of that 6%, you know. You know. Maybe uh, now Mickey's, you know, that's not bad. I prefer that than this one. Hey, but, Jean. Yeah. You know what I drank today? <laughs> Bud Light Platinum. No, but I did a I did a special video called Magnum Premium Malt Liquor 40th Anniversary. Man, you know, we we know we don't have no Magnum here. I'm sad here in Alabama. No Magnum. But yeah, I was happy. <laughs> I bet, man. But um uh but yeah, um but this sells pretty well at the store service stations. You see the size bottle I bought right over here. This was about two the stores in this liquor store uh, at the service station has kind of gone up a little bit higher than it needs to be. Uh is I think it was two twenty five for this 18 ounce bottle. Uh, I think that's what it is. And I'm kind of a little disappointed I paid for it, but I said, okay, you know, Bud, you know, there's going to be Bud, Bud, Bud Light, whatever, you know, or Bud Ice or Bud Nitro. And the stores around me, unfortunately, service stations are not doing what they need to do in terms of rotating their, their stock. But that, that's another discussion for another day. But I will give you my score of what this is. Again, I've had it before. It's not as strong as I'd like it to be. I think it's just, to me, just, you know, just tastes like Bud Light to me. So I will have my scores later for you guys. Okay. 
Yeah. All right, now I'm back in the New York groove. I'm back and um, this is a bottle I bought years ago and it says on the born on date, it says born on 13th December, 1996. So this is what it looked like 25 years ago. It used to say Asia, Europe, Africa, um, Australia. Now it just says United States of America. But anyway, this is back when it was still the Anheuser-Busch company, not Anheuser-Busch got out by InBev company. But anyhow, I saved it. I see that I didn't clean it out completely perfectly but um it's got the anheuser bush eagle on the bottle i got so many bottles i'm not even going to bother showing it um somebody asked me about date codes well like i said this one says it's the, they used to use born on date but then they went to best buy because i guess people wanted the best buy to know when they needed to drink it by this is july 19 2021 and i think hk is houston Houston, Texas, uh, at 1,700 hours in two minutes. I've been to the Houston Brewery. They're very, it's a very uh, clean place. The cleanliness is incredible. Same thing with St. Louis. It's very, uh, they're very serious. You know, when you go over there, they're all like working very buttoned down, like, doing this. I'm gonna, I gotta go do that. I went to the laboratory and they were bringing all the samples up to the lab and some of the sample, I was looking at them carefully. Some of the samples were hurricane high gravity, but ice and whatever. And then they were, they brought me to the bottling line and they were bottling thousands of bottles of Bud Ice, 40 ounce bottles of Bud Ice. So it was very interesting to see that. So, uh, you anyway, in St. Louis run. I've been to St. Louis and I've been to the brewery in Houston. I took the Brewmasters tour in Houston. It cost me $35, but uh, it was a two hour tour, a two hour tour. And then, um, which was great because they spend a lot more time and um, you get to see a lot more stuff. And uh, then after the tour, they gave me a cap, which I still have. They gave me a glass, I think. No, I don't think this is the glass I gave. I think a distributor gave me this glass, but they gave me a, a, a I say gave, you know, I paid for it, obviously. Uh, then they said, they said, try all these samples. And it was supposed to be three free samples, but then there was nobody there. They closed that tour down because nobody was going to Houston and, and touring Budweiser Brewery, so Anheuser-Busch Brewery. So there's no more tours and the hospitality room is gone. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful room. And, uh, I was the only person there at the 10.30 a.m. tour, so it was like around lunchtime. They were saying, try this, try that. I said, well, that's it, three beers. They said, ah, you can have more. <laughs> so I was like, okay, all right. Okay. <clears throat> we went to Bush Gardens in Tampa, you know, the wildlife farm. And, you know, it was supposed yeah. to be a limit of three, three beers, man. They had, they had everything right on. It was mostly Bush, just Bush beer. But they had plastic cups. You pour your own beer. Man, people got mashed. <laughs> it didn't cost you anything, though, did it? Was that a huh? free tour? That was a free tour, though, right? I think it was. Yeah, these are free, yeah. usually, Budweiser. When it was inside Bush Gardens. You had to pay to go to Bush Gardens. Oh, it was in the, the park. Tour, the tour was, like, included in it. The Bush Gardens in uh, Williamsburg and uh, in Tampa, yeah, they were... Serving beer. Uh, of course, the brewery in Williamsburg, not far, and of course, the brewery in Tampa. Oh, so. it was spread. it was right out of the right out of the right out of the vessel, man. Woo! Right, people right got the damn. Right. It was like ninety-seven yeah. degrees. Shit. All right, cool it. Now, when I went to uh, the uh, Houston tour, they let me drink the Bud Light out of the uh, aging tank. The guy took the little hose and he sprayed it in the yeah. glass. Oh yeah. Right, I got an aging glass. I got a tasting glass. He was like, "Try this Bud Light out of the aging tank." Well, it's it really good. Yeah. yeah, it was really good. And I actually have videos. I have all those videos still posted on my channel of the uh, Bud 
Anheuser Busch Houston tour. And in the, the video, only problem goes, nobody wants to watch them anymore. <laughs> no, right. But they're very short. They're they're not long. There's a like they're about a minute and a half, two minutes long. There's the uh, video of uh, them cooking the rice and cooking the barley. There's a video of the uh, fermentation uh, tank. Uh, where the, the I, I, I really can't. I, I I don't understand how anybody can harp on this beer. You know, all okay, these so-called beer experts on. harp on. on this beer, and it's a bunch of. Ronald is uh, getting a little exuberant. Um, so they 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 showed us the aging tanks. They showed us the laboratory. I got all those videos still posted. The bottom line. So if you want to take a virtual tour, virtual tour of the brewery check out the uh i think it's a playlist uh and has a bush houston texas anyway the, the score because we want to go on we don't want to go too long the score for this beer i mean i buy other beers because they're a lot cheaper and they're pretty comparable so i don't really honestly buy Budweiser a lot because i try i can save a lot of money buying keystone ice natural light i mean natural ice stuff like that but anyway uh, yeah, so I, but but on its own merits, it's really great, and uh, I'll, I'll give it a 93 and A. It's an A beer now. <laughs> Bumpy Road Brewery in New Hampshire is going to give us his score. Oh boy, I added ice to it, <laughs> it's uh, it's much better with ice, and that's the Bud Light Seltzer or the uh, Bud, Bud Light Marita. <laughs> well, I'm a Rita. Okay, all right. So um, adding the ice, having that like it dilutes it. Like I said, um, I think they purposely made it so. That I think that's why they mention it. Add ice if you want, um, because I can tell you, it's so cloyingly sweet. It's like a syrup. It's like an extract. Something that needs something else. You could probably actually blend this with tequila and have yourself a fairly decent flavored lime. You know, or whatever flavor you choose, margarita probably tastes the same as getting like those buckets of margarita mix and adding the uh, tequila and doing that because that's basically what this is. It just tastes like a like a margarita mix that's like that syrup concentrate. So by itself, I'm like at an 82. It's drinkable, but it's so cloyingly sweet and it, it is kind of hard hard to get through. Um, Uh, but uh, yeah, adding the ice, not only does it keep it chill. Do you see why people would drop? Would do you see why people would drink this though, or is there like totally no um, redeeming value? No, I mean I could. I mean if you're really into margaritas, I think. But you know, uh, margaritas are you know with tequila and everything. What are you looking at? You know, a couple margaritas and you're trashed because um, you're looking probably about 20% alcohol or so at least. Um, so these are like, I think a way to be able to get the, some of the flavors and stuff from margarita and have a few more than just maybe a couple and still be tolerable at a party. Um, so yeah. Adding, adding the, the ice to it though, diluting it, 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 Thins out the body for one thing, because that was one of the first things I noticed was how like syrup and thick the mouthfeel was, and how sticky yeah. it was. And, and having the the dilution from the ice when it melts and everything, it, it gives it a, a thinner body feel. Um, it's easier to it's easier to drink down. I mean, you know, it's like before it was like having syrup, pouring syrup in your mouth and trying to swallow that. So it's a, it's a lot easier to, to drink down when it's diluted. Uh, a little bit more thirst quenching, um, and and the flavors are mellowed out a little bit more. But I think you kind of pick up on on some of the other nuances of it. Like the lime doesn't seem so potent. Um, it's not as syrupy and sweet. It's it's more drinkable. It almost becomes like a Bud Light lime in effect, but but higher ABV still. Uh, 
I think with with at least adding ice cubes to it, I could see that I'd put this one at like an eighty, an eighty nine. I'll give it an eighty nine. I have a hundred when it's diluted. Um, it's just really, it's just when it's it's just by itself. It's just way too sweet and syrupy. And, and to it, be it fair, that it doesn't drink. It doesn't drink like a drink that you would. It, like I said, it seems like it's more of something that you need to add to something else. It's very popular, Bumpy. Very popular. Yeah, and he's. You're right. And to be fair, that is a brewery recommendation to drink it with ice. So. Yeah. So, so and kind of, I think that definitely makes it more of an enjoyable drink. Um, I mean, sometimes it's like it's like you want you want the flavors. So sometimes I complain about you know you, you get this beer and it talks about oh it's got you know uh, look like like a wit beer or something. Oh, there's coriander and orange peel, and you're drinking it, and you're like, "Where, you know, where is that coriander and orange peel?" I'm not picking up on it because they right. they do it so delicately. You know, it's like, oh, you really have to search for it and pretend that it's there. It's like I don't want to. I want to be able to taste everything that you're saying is in it. I want I want it to just pop out and be there, but I don't want it to be like I'm putting syrup lime in my mouth. So, yeah. right. Lime syrup, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I think uh, adding adding ice, diluting it, whatever. Like I said, or or you could add if you really want an extra kick and really mess yourself up. Um, yeah, uh, give yourself a uh, a four ounce uh, tequila shot and just add half a can of this lime margarita to it, and I think you have yourself basically a uh, margarita. There you go. Straight up. Good times. Good times. Because then you'll get that you'll get that tequila note and everything in there too. So and it will dilute it a little bit from the surfiness. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Now Ronald is going to give us his score. Oh, do you want me to? Uh, oh, Ron, Ron. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, it's up to you. Yeah, if you want to do any promos, I was going to come back and do promos. But if you want to do that now, oh okay. I'm no, if you're going to come back do. and do promos, I can. I can wait. I can hold on. It's not going to change. Okay. So Ron, go ahead. Ronald's going to do a score, and then John's going to do a score, and then Nina's going to do her score. So score now. Score, just like just like Nina gave it, it's a 98.6. It's a, <laughs> a, a 98.6. It's a great beer. It's always consistent. It's like every man's beer, every, you know, the average every man's temperature is 98.6. So that's what I'm giving it. It's a great product. I'll, I'll buy it until the day I die. In fact, I hope they put a 12-pack in my cask. <laughs> That's right, Ronnie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? All right. People now come to my funeral, buddy. If somebody's going to come to look at me when I'm dead, they'll, they'll, I'll have a barrel of beer before they walk into the fucking <laughs> funeral. Yeah, uh, oh. fuck. Man, 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 Who wants man, to see man. somebody dead? Morbid tradition, man. Morbid tradition. Yeah. Yeah, let's go view a dead body. Okay. That sounds like a good idea. Woo! <laughs> now, John's okay. going to give his score. So, for my Ronald's score for Bud that. Ice. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not drinking Bud Ice. I'm drinking uh, Bud Light Platinum. Excuse me. Forgive me. Um, yeah. As I said, very bland. Um, you know, it's like I said, um, I had, a, I remember one time my sister-in-law, uh, by marriage, my, my wife, my, my brother's wife, her, her right. sister, she was at we a club. It. Yeah. <laughs> Where, uh, she was at a club. She said, Whoa, those bottle light platinums are strong. And I said, and I looked at her and said, I typed the message on Facebook. I said, really? You know? And then, and I kind of feel the same way since then. And I felt the same when I reviewed it the first time. I haven't done a rehash of it. Maybe I might after tonight. Uh, but um, it's kind of, like I said, it's a very bland beer. I don't feel the effects. I don't feel the the, 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 the punch that it has. Like I said, it's a good, clean, refreshing beer. Super cold to have it. Um, I'm going to give it a, be respectful, I'm going to give it a B plus. Um and that would be a 8.7. So, 
Yeah, or yeah, B plus close to A minus. Yeah, so B plus eight point seven for the buy platinum. I think it's yeah uh, to me. It, yeah, to me, to me, eight. Yeah, you think now to me, eight point seven would be more just like a B. Okay. Okay. Well, what, what we consider B plus would be eight point nine. Eighty eight. Eighty eight. Okay. Eighty eight. Okay. Again, you're the teacher. I was just a student. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not that. I'm not that like like obsessed with no, it. It's, but it's all good, Jay. I know. I'm just messing around. But yeah, but like I said, I think it's kind of bland, and it's not something I, you know, I guess all the rage was about. I just don't feel that 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 thing for it as people say it does. It's good. It's very refreshing. It has that. I just think it's, like I said, bland, and it's not as strong as I think it it, it could be. So. Um, yeah, well, but, I still B, B plus is not a bad score. You know? What butt eyes? We're about to go crazy. Oh, yeah, no. woo! Don't go crazy. No, now Nina's gonna give her. Nina's got a score, and then uh, we're gonna do promos, and then we're out of here. Yes, uh -oh. Nina. Woo -hoo -hoo! Don't, encourage <laughs> Don't encourage it. Don't encourage it. Don't encourage it. Don't encourage. Yes, I ended up getting a real good deal. Tonight, um, this is a 24 ounce can of Bud Light, um, and I got this other 24 ounce can of Steel Reserve 211, four dollars. All right, what a deal! Couldn't believe it. I'm not sure if I used any of my like uh, bonus points or whatever, you know, from giving them my phone number or whatnot, but um, I'm considering this one today because this Bud Light. As refreshing as it really was, as smooth and clean as my palate is right now, it didn't pack a whole lot of punch. So this is kind of like, you know, uh, would be your safe session choice if you're going to be driving a boat or something. Um, this, you should probably stay put for the night <laughs> afterwards. Yes. But anyway. So. Yeah. So anyway. Um, I gotta give this a pretty high rating. Very refreshing, nice, just a fine beer. Um, probably I'm gonna, and I'm gonna have to rate within the style. So for a light beer, I'm not even sure what the competition would be. So I might even have to, this thing is fever red hot. We're talking like 99 for the style. And uh, I mean, what can you compare it to? You got Miller Lite, you know. Uh, so I'm gonna give this sucker a 99, which is well deserved. Um, like wow. I said, red hot, um, off the Richter, pretty much. It's uh, you know, you you should probably seek medical attention if your uh, your temperature is as high as the Bud Light's rating. And there's there's really no arguing with it. Um, I think it really edges out. Um, what natural light has going. Um, not that there's anything oh. wrong with natural light. It just has a little bit of extra sizzle and dazzle and zazzle to uh, to your glass. So it's the, um, beach wood. It, it's the beach wood, it's the quality control, it's uh, it's the made in America, uh -oh. it's, it's all that. Um, uh -oh. You get what you pay for. You they, this is, they don't give this stuff away. You can call me Nina. You can call me Jean. You can <laughs> call me Ron. You can call me Bumpy. You can call me Jay. <laughs> all right. Now, anyway, all right. All right. Now, oh, Craig. Now, now to, to viewer Craig. Hey, Craig, you know, I get four chances on the cussing, not three, so I'm pretty generous. All right. Now, but no fifth chance. All right. Now, uh, tomorrow morning at dawn, but I'm probably going to do it closer to 7 a.m. Central time, uh, Eastern time because it's so dark at daylight. So, you know, it's so dark. And uh, I want it to be dawn, not pitch black busters. But anyway, I've got Crown Royal Black, which has been doing very well. It better do well. I paid $27.99 for it. So it's Crown Royal Black uh, introduced in 2010. Pretty interesting product, i got to admit. And it's going up against... Uh, Caliber Premium Canadian, which is loved by dozens of people around the world. <laughs> anyway, uh, introduced in 2004 in a beautiful plastic bottle. But anyway, uh, 
that won't be much of a challenge, but it'll be interesting. And then the follow up later in the day, because I got to double up because of some upcoming stuff going on. But we got rich and rare reserve. Well, this this could really present a challenge. You know, this will be a credible challenge. Rich and rare reserve. As you can see, I'm getting to the end. I don't think mm -hmm. I'm gonna buy more, but I've got about mm, two, maybe three challenges left with this, but I don't think three is gonna make it, but it could. So rich and rare reserve, I can get this for about $10, 10 to $12, Crown Royal Black, you know, 28 to 30 bucks. All right, so that's it for the promos. Next Wednesday, oh yeah, you wanna know next Wednesday, uh, let me look at my schedule book because I don't remember. Um, Next Wednesday is any Yingling beer. Any Yingling beer. It could be that Raging Eagle. It could be Yingling Lord Chesterfield Ale, which I can't bring. Yingling Light could be Flight and so on. So I think it, it'll be sad because a lot of Western people still can't get Yingling yet. But mm -hmm. with their agreement with uh, Molson Coors, it should uh, become available across the whole USA in the next few years. But anyway, next week, any Yingling beer. I haven't decided which one I'm going to bring. I really don't know. I have to think about it. So that's it. Now, Bumpy Road Brewery is going to present his promos at this very moment. And then Nina dropped off, but she might come back. Hey, guys, bye. let me go ahead and go. I'll talk to you all. All right, bye. Thanks, guys. It's been fun. Later. You're welcome. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, hey. Hey. So uh, uh, hopefully uh, in the next week, uh, Yingling actually starts to, uh, you know, distribute to New Hampshire. Um, I highly oh, doubt it. They skip over us. They distribute to Maine and Vermont and all around Massachusetts, but they skip New Hampshire. Um, so I don't see it happening, but uh, that'd be that'd be nice. I've had a few Yingling products, not too bad. I enjoy their uh, their uh, was it their standard lager or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll see. I highly doubt it's gonna happen. I might not be able to join next Wednesday because I Sorry. doubt I'm gonna get out of the England product, but uh I hope I do. Um I'll keep my fingers crossed because we are getting different breweries distributing like it seems like every week. It's like all of a sudden something new is popping up. So it could it uh, could happen. Unlikely. It could, it really could. Um for multi Monday, it looks like the English brown ale is the winner so um multi mondays 8 p.m eastern standard time on my channel we're gonna be doing the english brown ale so go out, find yourself an english brown ale if you can join up on panel you just have to act like a normal rational human being you can't be dropping f-bombs like sutton um and uh right yeah if not i mean join up in the chat and all that and all that good stuff i will put out a video uh in the next day or so uh saying what what beer is for Multi Monday, which now, I just mentioned. So, let me ask you a question, if you don't mind, uh, before yeah. we close out. What if I bring something like Lagunitas Newcastle Brown Ale, the American brewed version of that? Is that qualified, or is it not allowed? Yeah, no, that would be allowed because it's based off the regular recipe of Newcastle. Uh, I think they they maybe hopped it up a little bit or something like that. But it's still that Newcastle brown ale, I think, was a southern brown ale um, from England. So there are there are two different styles of English brown ales. You get northern and southern. But I'm not going to go that far into it. Just bring it. Bring anything that classifies as an English brown ale. You're good. OK, well, that's, yeah, that's whether it's American made or not, it doesn't have to come from England. The English brown ale style. Right, the style. I guess you have to throw the style word in there. Don't but don't try to play games with it and talk about, well, I have an ESB or I have an English uh, old ale. It's like, no, that's not. It's from England, but it's not a brown ale. You know, it's got right. It has to be a brown ale. Don't bring, we did English porters last week. Don't bring an English porter. Being like, well, it's close enough to a brown ale. Well, no, it has to be a brown ale. Right. It's brown. It's a porter, but it's not a brown ale. Okay. There are brown ales out there that are very, very close to porters. Um, it depends on a lot of it just goes down to what the brewer, um, you know, states it as being. I've had I've had some nice brown ales made from a, a local brewery and their brown ales are very rich and 
basically tastes like quarters. But they can serve brown ale, so it's based off the packaging. If it's if it's a brown ale, it's a brown ale. Yeah, and I can get that uh Lagunitas Heineken Newcastle brown ale like a snap, you know. Yeah. I don't have to go looking for it. Okay. Well, thanks for joining. Uh we appreciate Nina joining with Bud Light, and then she was Nina was cracking open steel reserve. So uh I don't think I would want to drink two tall cans, especially following with 8.1 steel reserve. But uh I, I appreciate Jesse joining with his uh his trepidation. <laughs> but you were you were a gamer. I appreciate Jean joining with Bud Light Platinum. Um appreciate Ronald joining with Budweiser. Unfortunately he excommunicated himself with the cussing because we had discussed that previously on three previous occasions in fact but uh that happens sometimes with uh with uh things <laughs> L lubrication equals loose lip sometimes yeah uh, uh massive uh, i don't want to say massive uh exuberant consumption of alcohol may cause that all right now uh burley so burley sullivan says Clinking the mugs, clinking the mugs, clinking the mugs. Now, Burley might join again one day and maybe not even incognito. So Jesse's going to uh, quote unquote enjoy finishing that product. I thought you were going to have me play the, uh, the, the music that uh, Prima Donna would do. Oh, yeah. You want to do close us out with uh, <laughs> Close enough. Maybe. Maybe he's. I didn't even ask him because I knew he wouldn't have wanted to join for Budweiser, you know, so I didn't want to even bother him with that. But uh, so you're going to so called enjoy the finishing that and then you're going to go to a contest, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um. We're gonna, we're gonna see. I, I've got I've got something out there. Um, I'm not sure if he'd want to put it on his channel afterwards. If I happen to win this, uh, what the ABV game tonight? I'm gonna eat the whole bag of these ghost pepper chips oh, from Trader right. Joe's. Seven ounces. Are they hot? I don't know how. I've never had them. I don't know how hot they are. But I figure, you know, if you eat the whole bag of them, you got to get something out of it. Yeah, you'll be blowing your nose and sweating. <laughs> All right. Well, well anyway, uh, it was a great time for the most part. I thought uh, people had some good comments and uh, the scores were. I, I was surprised actually by the scores. I didn't think they would be that high because I. I thought they were going to be much lower, but um, they were very high. And um, so be ready next week, y'all, for English brown ales. And Style Sunday seems confusing to me. I don't know what's going on with Style Sunday. It's got me a little perplexed. But, uh, well, whatever the case, I'm sure it's going to happen. Yeah, I think – so it wasn't announced by John, as far as I know, but Alex came out so that he was going to do it. Because <laughs> John's not going to be able to do it because he's going to be up here in, in the – New England. So, oh, John and is going to be in New England. Yep, yeah, I'm going to be visiting with him on Saturday. Golly. So, yeah, he's going to fly in a plane for the first time. Flying a plane for the first time. He's a bit nervous about it, but hope he doesn't have a panic attack and go berserk and get arrested and not make it. <laughs> yeah, that would be bad. <laughs> that would be bad. But I hope y'all have a good time. I didn't know he was even making that trip. But I'm not part of Marco Polo and all your other. Uh, yeah, it was it was kind of the, the last minute kind of thing. Like it was just kind of brought up, I think, last week. So. Yeah, I, wow. I got to, I got to at least take a day off from work. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to really visit him at all. So. And he must yeah. be flying to Boston, I guess. Boston. Yeah. Well, that's interesting, John and L.A. If you're listening, have a good trip to merry old New England. All right. Thanks, folks, for watching this video production. Been on over an hour. And we are out of here.
Cheers.